Hello, CatholicExodus.org here. Going to do a brief series about some of the propositions put forth about Mary, the mother of Jesus, all of which I deny based on scripture and reason. And I'm going to look at each of those, see if there's any basis for them. And then we're going to grant all of them, count them all as true, and see if that changes anything theologically. I don't believe it will, but uh, we're going to look at them first up. We're going to discuss Mary's perpetual virginity, the Mary ever virgin that we're always hearing about. Uh, first of all, this uh, fanciful notion doesn't survive scrutiny of the New Testament. In fact, it doesn't even uh, survive the first chapter of the first book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 1 alone has this notion uh, <coughs> uh, lying, smoking in ashes by the end. First of all, we're told that uh, before they came together, she was found with child. Okay, but that obviously the implication is that they ever did later come together as a married man and wife. Uh, if I say, I finished my report before I went home last night, you uh, obviously uh, would infer that I had gone home last night. And I say, well, I didn't say that. I could have slept in my car or I could have gone to a hotel. But obviously the implication is clear there. Uh, also, towards the end of chapter 1, we have uh, this statement that he did not know her until, okay, another obvious reference to that eventually he did know her because they were betrothed, uh, until she brought forth her firstborn. Okay, she brought forth her firstborn. Obviously, another implication that there were more. True, if he were an only child, he would still be the firstborn, but why would they use these phrases? And of course, the many references to his brothers and sisters, all of which are dismissed by Catholic and Orthodox uh, church members with the, uh, uh, with the sort of excuse that there wasn't a word for cousins and things like that. Yeah, but there was a word for relative they could have used. Uh, instead of describing Jesus' brothers and sisters, which are talked about later on. And uh, there's just no reason for that. Uh, the only reason that you would have to make such uh, effort and use such gymnastics to explain away these clear references and the clear uh, implication of Scripture is that if you were trying to pound the square peg of your theological presuppositions into the round hole of Scripture. That's the only reason you'd have to do such a thing. Other um, fantastical notions have been put forth, such as uh, all of them human reason, completely, uh, or most of them. Some are apocryphal legends and some are human reason. Human reason that Mary's womb, because Jesus was in it, was the, is the Holy of Holies, therefore nobody else could ever live there or have been conceived there because it was the Holy of Holies and they would defile it. Well, this is of course unfounded. The Holy of Holies in Scripture clearly is heaven itself, where we all believers will go. We are not all going to go to Mary's womb, we're all going to heaven and uh, so Mary's womb is really not the issue here. There are some also some apocryphal legends, such as Mary was a nun, and she was hanging out with her nun friends, and they said that, uh, well, you know, we know you're a nun, and you never intended to be with a man or anything, but since you're going to give birth to the Messiah, get betrothed to Joseph anyway, because uh, that will keep the stigma and the taint of illegitimacy off of poor little Jesus, which, based on some statements, appears that there was some of that followed him anyway. Here's the problem with that, though, is that the narrative clearly tells us in the scripture that when Gabriel came and spoke to Mary and made the Annunciation, uh, that she was already betrothed to Joseph. Okay, What business did she have being betrothed to a man that she never intended to be intimate with? You know, Absolutely none. Everybody knows this is farcical. Uh, so the worst, the best you could hope for is that once finding out she was going to give birth to the Messiah, that um, she would have said, okay, all right, no, no intimacy, Joseph, sorry, we got the Messiah here, um, we're going to just live celibately for life, but we're going to be married anyway. There is not one shred of scripture to uh, support this, not anything upon which to base this idea. The only thing the only reason that this is even necessary is the ancient cults of goddess, mother, virgin goddess and child cults uh, that have been around forever. Uh, they were all over the Roman Empire at the time. 
when Constantine supposedly became a Christian, and they said, all right, we got all these mother and child statues everywhere, and images, let's make them Mary and Jesus. And everybody had to go to great lengths to try to cook up uh, scriptural backing for this idea of Mary being really important, being really exalted, and they also had to make her a virgin too. Well, the text does not make her a virgin. I don't care what men say, and the human reasons they employ, oh, Joseph would never defile her after that, rubbish. Um, and her immaculate conception, of course, she, he couldn't have been born of a sinner. Well, why not? He touched sinners all the time. He wasn't defiled by them. Basically, he just borrowed her womb to be uh, to be born, uh, born of a woman, it says, and I've heard some people make a very big deal out of that, that he was born of a woman. Well, yeah, that just states that he was born in the human uh, sphere and in flesh like all of us were. It doesn't mean anything significant about the woman. In fact, the word woman he uses for her, gune, I believe it is, is the same word he uses for the woman at the well and is used for every other woman. So she obviously was not exalted above other women. Uh, except for she had a unique position, certainly, and she was righteous, more than most women, obviously. But, okay, now we're going to grant, let's just say, if she were ever virgin. Let's just, okay, we'll grant it. It's utterly unthinkable, based on Scripture, to think to conclude that. But let's just grant that she were. What then? So what? What does it mean? Nothing. Does that make her more holy? No. The holiest people that ever lived, most of them were married. A few we don't know, but uh, most of them were married. Some of them married multiple times. Uh, didn't affect anything. Doesn't mean a thing. Her perpetual virginity does not mean holiness, because the holy people of God were all married, most of them. So there's nothing to this, folks. This Next, we'll be looking at some other notions like the phrase, full of grace, and uh, was she the woman in Revelation 12, and some other questions in the series, Mary, So What?